Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to talk about connecting FusionAuth to Active Directory using an LDAP connector. So you might want to do this for a couple of reasons. The first is you might have multiple different applications that you are using FusionAuth as a central data store for. And some of them might be for your users in the outside world, and some of them might be for internal users. For the outside users or the customers, you might be uh, using FusionAuth or social login as the system of record for their authentication data. For internal users, however, you might have a database, LDAP, uh, Active Directory, something like that. And you might want to authenticate some users against the external data sources like social login or fusion auth and you might want to authenticate other users against active directory the other use case that might be of interest is if you have an application that you put on site on prem or you make available to your customers in some other way and you want to easily have the ability for fusion auth to federate against their active directory instances and so you can bundle fusion auth into your application and then easily configure it to federate against your customer's on-prem directory so that your application can have its user data system record be in your customer's Active Directory directories. So real quick before we get started, this assumes a couple of things. It assumes that you have Active Directory running. It assumes that you have FusionAuth running locally. It also assumes that you can connect the two so that uh, FusionAuth can talk to Active Directory because that's important. So the other prerequisite is that I have created an internal application. So I'm calling it a payroll application, but it could be anything. And that is what I'm going to have uh, controlled by the Active Directory authentication piece. The other thing that is important to do is to make sure that you have a valid Fusion Auth uh, reactor license. And the LDAP connector is a feature of the paid editions of Fusion Auth. And so if you don't have that, then you cannot use the connector feature. There is a free trial available. So if you visit fusionauth.io slash pricing, you'll be able to check out all the various paid editions and see some of the features that you will get from using them. If you're interested in exploring this more, please visit fusionauth.io. So what we're going to do is I'm going to add an Active Directory user. I'm going to configure FusionAuth to connect to Active Directory. And then I'm going to log in as that user. So we're going to add a new user first. And I have remote desktop into this uh, Windows PC. The other thing that is important to note here is that I am uh, setting the password not to be forced to be changed at next logon. Obviously your security policies you know, need to be maintained. If you force the user to change their password at next logon, you, you need to have that happen via normal Active Directory channels before FusionAuth connects. And you can fill in whatever information you want to fill in. 
after ensuring that we have a UPN login, uh, that is going to be a key piece of information for us to find this user information. And we create. So there she is. And now essentially we are done with Active Directory. We've added the user. So let's go back to FusionAuth and we're going to go ahead and configure the LDAP connector. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a Lambda. And this Lambda is going to basically translate between what we get from LDAP and what FusionAuth needs to know about a user in its system. So we're going to select the LDAP connector reconcile. And the actual code is not too complicated, but we'll step through it. So here's code. And you can see that this reconcile function gets two parameters. The first is the user, and the second is user attributes. User attributes is basically a hash of everything that comes from the LDAP server, Active Directory in this case. And the user object is what FusionAuth expects. And so you can take anything that comes from LDAP and put it into the user object. You can see we do that with the user principal name, the given name, uh, the, the SN attribute, which I believe stands for surname. And we can also hard code things. So here we're setting the user active to be true. We also can put in other information. In this particular case, we are registering this user for a given application. So I happen to know that the F81 application is the same application as the internal payroll app that we previously had created. Finally, we need to assign the user an ID. This needs to be a valid UUID. If you are using an external data source as a system of record, as we are, right? Active Directory is where Carla's gonna go to change her password. She might be logging on to a Windows PC with that information. Then you wanna make sure this user ID is the same all the time. Because if Carla changes her email address or something else about her, we still wanna make sure that she's the same user in FusionAuth. And there's a helper method to convert the uh, GUID in Active Directory, which is stored as a binary, into a FusionAuth-friendly UID. And that's really about all there is for this Lambda. So let's go ahead and save it. Great, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna create a connector. So that's under the settings menu. So we can create a generic connector, which lets you basically call into any HTTP API that can return a user object, but we're not gonna talk about that today too much. We're actually gonna dive into the LDAP connector. So here we wanna make sure we set the Lambda to the mapping reconciliation lambda that we just created. We need a name and obviously we need an LDAP URL as well. So this is a insecure LDAP URL. We obviously don't recommend running this in production. You can secure the LDAP connection via start TLS or LDAP S. In this particular case, uh, which this IP address may have clued you in on, we're on a private subnet, and so I'm less worried about traffic being intercepted. Then we need to actually configure how this connector is going to find the information about the user. The base structure is where you want to start searching within your directory. So I've created a sample Active Directory server, and this is 
kind of the top of the structure, but if I had an organizational unit underneath it that I wanted to start just there, I could do that as well. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get set up the system account distinguish name and the system account password. And this is what the FusionAuth connector is going to initially connect as to look for the user who is trying to authenticate. This user needs to have at least read-only privileges. Then we're going to put in some other uh, attribute information. So this login identifier attribute is what we're going to look up the user by. Basically, it's the whatever someone's going to put into the username field. And then we have an identifying attribute, which is basically just the leaf of the tree of the directory. And then we have our requested attributes. So this is everything that we're going to get in that user attributes map that we're going to put into the FusionAuth user object. And that last one is worth explaining a little bit more. Basically, the object GUID is stored in Active Directory as a string of bytes. Basically, it's a binary representation, not a string representation. And so we need to tell our LDAP connection that we want that back as a string of bytes. Otherwise, it gets corrupted. All right. So that is all configured. So we've set up the Lambda, we've set up the connector. The next thing we need to do is actually associate this connector with our tenant. So in this particular case, we only have one tenant, just the default one. And obviously you can have as many tenants as you want and you can create connector policies for each tenant that are unique. And by the way, I am doing all of this via the admin UI, but you can absolutely use the APIs to create these connectors and enable them. We're gonna add a policy here. So we can select the connector we just created. We can choose which domains, and these are email domains, this connector is available for. And again, think back to that case that I outlined at the beginning where we talk about the internal application. If you work at example.com and you want to make sure that only people from example.com can possibly try to authenticate against your Active Directory service through FusionAuth, you could you know, set this domain to be example.com, another example.com. So you could list multiple domains there if you wanted to, but we're gonna leave the default, which is basically gonna match every person who's authenticating against this policy. The other thing that's interesting here is the migrate user option, which we're gonna leave off. And if you are interested in using an LDAP connector to migrate away from Active Directory into FusionAuth, then you would check this. And then what happens there is every time someone authenticates, their data is pulled from Active Directory one time, the first time they authenticate, and then from there on, FusionAuth is the system of record. It enables easy migrations. But we're going to treat Active Directory as our system of record, and so we're going to leave migrate user unchecked. And that means that every time someone authenticates, we're going to check against Active Record. All right, so this looks set up. So let's go ahead and submit it. And then we're going to move it up. And this matters less right here, but if you have multiple different connectors, some for different domains, you may wanna play around with this order. All right, so we can save the tenant.
and we are good to go. So where are we now? We have created a new user, we have created a Lambda, we've created the connector, we've configured the tenant to use the connector. Now let's go ahead and log in as a user. Let's log in as that user we just added. So I have set up an application that is not necessarily a payroll application, but will serve the purpose of illustration. And it has a public section and it has a secure section. So when we go to the secure section, we want to log in as Carla. We submit. We are shown Carla's information. You can also go ahead and go to the user section and you can see that Carla is created in FusionAuth. And then if we go here, we can see that she's been registered for this application. We can also edit her information and we can see that the first name and last name were pulled over from Active Directory. So we've seen how easy it is to connect FusionAuth to an Active Directory instance. And this will allow you to have all your data stored in Active Directory or some of the data for some of your users, depending on the application. And at the same time, let you have access to all the features and stability and performance that FusionAuth brings to the table.